Uh, hi, my name is Andy and today I want to show you my DIY temperature control kit for C41 and E6 PIM developing. So if you're just researching information about developing a film at home, you'll probably know that in order to have consistent results you need to control the temperature in some way. And most of people just, you know, control temperature by keeping a water in their sink or some kind of basin at correct level. You so see you have something like that, so just a developing tank. You just submerge this tank into water and this keeps your chemicals that are inside and inside of your bottles before you pour them at correct temperature. So there's really nothing wrong with just keeping your temperature at a certain level by just pouring more hot water into the sink. But you know what, um, there's a lot of things going on when you develop C41 and I just needed that tiny bit of convenience that I can forget about the temperature and just focus on, you know, pouring baths in and out, agitation and checking times. Because the better and more consistently you do all these things, the more consistent your developing is. Simple as that. So this setup serves me to take the temperature out of the equation. So what it consists of? As you can see, I have two storage containers that fill into one another and the space between them is filled with just with bubble wrap. I'm just gonna show it to you. Just, just a simple bubble wrap I'm reusing from some packaging I received. Originally I wanted to use some expandable foam to fill the space in between of these two containers, but I just wanted to quickly develop some film and I never got to do that. Bubble wrap works perfectly as insulation and you will need insulation because otherwise the temperature in the tank drops too quickly and if you have a weak heater like I do it can struggle to keep up with uh, temperature changes obviously you can use just one container you do not need to just insulate it in some way wrap it in something that holds the heat and that's pretty much it okay so what I have is this little Chinese thermostat these things can be had for 3 euro maybe 4 euro delivered from China slightly more if you order from Europe, but this will be this very device. These are extremely popular. They are kind of used in many industrial applications. Okay, so the way it works is it just has a little probe, which I will show you. You see there is a little, a little wire in the center of the screen with a little metal tip, right? This is actually when this device measures the temperature. Okay, and what it does when temperature falls below a certain level, it turns the heater on. And as you can see, this is my heater here. This heater is an ordinary aquarium heater. The only thing about it is that it's a heater with no thermostat built in. And this is important and this is maybe this might be just difficult to get. Why? Because nowadays most of aquarium heaters have a thermostat built in for convenience of the user. And these thermostats go only up to 30 degrees Celsius. For C41 development you need 38 degrees. So obviously these uh, heaters are no good and there's no way, as far as I know, to switch this thermostat off. So your challenge would be to find an aquarium heater that just does not have the thermostat, right? There can be found, they are being manufactured and they are to be used with external thermostat like this one. Okay, my heater is 90 watts one or 80 or 90 watts one and it's slightly too weak for the tank of this size. Okay, and yeah. If I was buying now, I'd buy 150 watts, but I couldn't just get one like that. You know, I wanted a stronger one. So yeah, 150 watts would be perfect, I think. Well, with better insulation, you, you know, you can, you can have a weaker one. Okay, and there's one more thing. As you can see, the water surface is moving here, right? And it is moving because I have this little tiny pump fitted. You probably see this little nozzle here, which is next to the thermostat's probe. This is the probe, this little wire with, with metal tip. And next to it, you see this little nozzle that pumps the water out. You can see that the surface of the water is moving. And the reason it's moving is because this little nozzle is pumping out the water. And why do you need that? Well, you need that because you want the water in the whole tank to be at the same temperature. So you mix it in order to avoid situation when it, the water hits around the heater uh, and around the probe, for example the thermostat gets false reading, so the water is warm all the way here, but it's colder here, so your chemicals or your development tank does not get heated properly, okay? So that's why you need to agitate the water. 
You can probably do without that, but it's a handy feature. One more thing you can forget about, and the thing is that this little pump is an aquarium pump, right? It's used just to just to agitate the water, and by agitating you uh, increase the level of oxygen in the water so the fish can breathe. This is a very simple and very cheap device. You can get it on eBay, like again, for like 5 euro or something like that, you know? So very handy to have, very cheap. It makes sense to have it. And you know, it has little uh, suction cups that make it easy to attach to the wall of the container. So I have uh, something that holds my heater in place too, so I'm not running risk of the heater to go up to the surface and damage itself because, you know, these heaters are designed to be used fully submerged only. Okay, as you see now, the thermostat started kicking in and out. You see this little red light that is coming on and off. You see, when the light is on, it means that the heater is working. So what happened is that the temperature has been dropping since I poured the water in, and now it reached the temperature where the thermostat is switching the, the heater on. It's gonna just go on and off like that quite frequently. And by doing that, but giving this water this pulses of heating, it will just keep it at 38 degrees. Very handy. You don't have to do anything. You just simply take your development tank, put it in, and off you go, you know? This is very, very, very handy. Just one quick tip. Just before you start actually developing your film, it's handy to have an external thermometer and just put it into your actual chemicals because you don't really know if they have or have not already heated up to the desired temperature. So just as an extra layer of safety, just before you start developing, just put this like external thermometer into your actual developing bath. Make sure it is on 38 and then you're ready to roll. Okay, so that's, I think, I think that would be it. Thank you for watching.